The work is called The Holy Trinity of 2020 Whilst Stocks Last and it's a scathing uh, critique of the machinations of commodification and the way that it sort of changes the way that we interact with objects. All sort of centred around these contemporary issues um, within the gallery. I think the one is based on war, the whole assassination of the general Soleimani and the sort of fallout that followed. And then that is all accompanied by a smattering of sort of these digitally produced sort of badges and t-shirts which work to like flatten these ceramic pieces into sort of mere aesthetics. The one ceramic piece is in the gallery. It's this rather crass rendition of someone who looks very familiar wearing this vintage sort of pilot's cap, completely naked, and he's sat upon this missile firing off to who's knows where. You know, it's all heavily saturated, it's garish. The whole merchandising aspect of the piece came around when I went to the NGV at the start of the year. It was uh, the cause exhibition at the time. I had already become sort of acutely aware of the whole exhibition through merely like the merchandising that had sort of leached out into the world and um, spread everywhere. These artworks had sort of become a brand in and of themselves, almost like a separate entity to these pieces. Starting points and influences um, stemmed majorly from everything that went on in 2020 and it's sort of the merchandising in and of that itself. The sort of capitalization of these tragic events, the bushfires, the BLM protests, the coronavirus. People inspire me. Um, Stories about people, how people interact with stuff. I find that's intensely intriguing. People like uh, Murakami, Kurt Vonnegut, Rosalie Hamm, Alice Munro. Hugely inspiring people in terms of the way that they're able to relate human experiences into like text, into stories, into these uh, delightfully absurd tales. They're super cool, I'd love them. In terms of the ceramic works, um, they were made of stoneware clay, then were underglazed and fired accordingly. Um, I try to use these sort of really garish colours and display like a, this contrast between obviously the matte underglaze and the, the sort of glossy glazes, mostly because I find that stuff just fun to do. Um, in terms of their making, I try to sort of spontaneously as possible. That I wanted them very much to be these very impressionistic captures of my initial reaction to them, which also allowed me to lend meaning to them in retrospect. In terms of challenging, probably the scaling down of the work, both like sort of the innate scaling that comes with sort of having to get it done on time, and then the further alterations that have been made to the work due to sort of the complications involving everything that happened during the year um, and how that interrupted the artistic process. Going into the year with this sort of concrete idea of what the work is going to be is fantastic. If you're trying to mould your exploration to fit with that theme in and around it, you're going to find that you don't have a lot of wiggle room. Um, those distractions and tangents, um, they're often sort of indications of what you'd rather be doing. And it turns out that works are actually easy to make when you're having fun with them.